Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel for today's video. It's a big one. It's one of my favorites of the year. It's also one of the most stressful. For today's video, I am going to be doing my 2020 makeup favorites. I spent a lot of time in my room today picking out what the best of the best was. If you're not familiar with my channel, I am a makeup review channel, so I try a lot of products. So this, I was acting like it was a life or death situation. I was definitely taking it too serious, but I've narrowed things down, narrowed. It's a lot of products, but here are my 2020 makeup favorites. If you wanna see what the best of the best was, just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup products on the market. And I pulled together a lot of things that I've tried in 2020 and these are the best of the best items. Now, one product that is not in this video is going to be eyeshadow palettes. I'm an eyeshadow palette junkie, hoarder, whatever you wanna call it. So eyeshadow palettes get their own dedicated video, but this is everything else. So let's just um, get into it. So we're gonna start off with tools. And I discovered a brush brand this year that is incredible. And that is BK Beauty. I cannot believe these brushes because they are a synthetic brush company. So for all my friends who don't like natural fibers, this is as close as you're going to get. They feel very, very sturdy in the handles. They feel very high quality. You almost can't really tell that they are synthetic brushes. So this is actually started from a YouTuber's company. Her name is Lisa J here on YouTube. She is so kind. And did you know BK Beauty? They preach kindness. I think they donate or have a charity that has to do with kindness, anti-bullying, all of that good stuff. So there's so much meaning behind the brand and they make bomb brushes. So I I love my natural hair brushes. There are plenty of natural hair brushes this year that I absolutely love. But just a brand discovery as a whole, as far as brushes go, BK Beauty was the best. They have amazing shapes. And you'll see me throughout this video using those brushes. So definitely check them out. I do believe I have a discount code. It's unaffiliated. I, it should be in my description box if you're interested at all. And let's get into the beauty products now. So let's start off with primer so i have two face primers this year that i discovered that were amazing so the first product that we're going to talk about here is the tatcha the liquid silk canvas this is one of two face primers this year that i discovered that are amazing now this was kind of a different format it launched before it came in this format almost in like a pot and you had to pick it up and melt it and put it in i just i did not like that i didn't see a difference in my skin i thought it was so overhyped until i tried this i tried this on a whim not thinking that i would like it and i love it i really feel like it smooths my skin it's not super moisturizing but it's pretty moisturizing for my dry skin but i feel like makeup really does apply easier on the skin because of this and it looks better. So this is definitely the best primer that I tried this year. I absolutely love it, highly recommend it, it works. The next face primer that I have is from Rare Beauty. Rare Beauty is a brand that came out this year and this is the Illuminating Primer. This is by far my favorite product in that line that came out. It is a gorgeous illuminating primer. It gives a nice glow to the face while still being on the more moisturizing side. I just think it's so fitting for what is on trend right now as far as glowy skin. I think it looks really good on its own and it of course works great as a glowy base underneath your makeup so I actually applied that to the outer parts of my face today and I applied the Tatcha to the inner parts just to get that inner glow from this product it is amazing my favorite product from the line I have four foundation products to share with you guys I at first felt like not many great foundations came out this year and honestly with the exception of like one product these are all older foundations that I discovered this year. Wasn't the best year for foundations. Also, I didn't want to test all the new ones because I do not wear makeup under my mask. I, I don't like that. So the first foundation that I fell in love with this year was the Guerlain L'Essential Natural Glow Foundation. Now, this is a foundation that I have on my skin. For me, this is a gorgeous luxury foundation. It's kind of in the middle as far as 
performance goes. Like it's not full coverage, but it's not light coverage, it's a medium coverage. It's not glowy, but it's also not matte. It's right there in the middle. It just provides everything in the middle, but it's top, top, top quality. I absolutely love it. This is like the ideal foundation for me for what I look for, and it really perfects the skin. It doesn't emphasize texture. It wears really well. It's really gorgeous, and I love the way it smells. I just feel like it's a very unique foundation in my collection, and I've grabbed for it a lot this year. We also have a more affordable one. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. And surprisingly, this is a yearly favorite. I didn't expect it to be, but I reached for it so much this year that I couldn't not put it in. This is my ideal everyday foundation, so it's a little bit lighter than the Guerlain. It feels lighter on the skin, and it's still kind of in the middle as far as not matte, but not glowy, not lightweight, but also not full, full coverage. But it feels really light on the skin. I would say it does air a little bit more on the lighter side, but I just like how easy it is to put on. It's quite a liquidy foundation. It just looks really good. It wears really well, and it's very, very affordable. So this next foundation that I'm talking about, I believe I did try it the year prior, but this year was the year that I really fell in love with it. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. Now this is not my ideal everyday foundation by any means. It's a very full coverage foundation. It looks like makeup on the skin. It's thicker. It doesn't have a natural finish to it but I love it for days that I want full coverage. I don't love the way that this wears, but the way that it looks is so great. So if I have an event that I want my skin to look perfected for, this is what I go to. Now I have the shade four, which is pretty light for me. So I tend to mix this with a deeper foundation that typically has a lighter coverage just to kind of soften this up and make it look a bit more natural. But I'm telling you, this is my absolute favorite full coverage, full glam foundation not into full coverage foundations really, but if I do want the full coverage, this is the one that I went for. And then finally, I've talked about this in a video recently, but we have the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. Now when I tried this product on its own, I did not like this at all, but what I ended up discovering what I loved it for was mixing into other foundations that I felt were a little bit too thick or too full coverage. Like for example, this and the Charlotte Tilbury would go very, very well together. So this has been my secret weapon, especially for stick foundations, the Hourglass Vanish, for example. This just makes sticks foundations blend so seamlessly on the skin. And if a foundation is too matte or it's too thick, this, fixes it, thins it out, makes it more natural, makes it a little bit more glowy. Highly, highly recommend this product. I love it. Next, let's move on to concealer. I only have one concealer to talk about because this stole the show for me this year. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Sublime Perfection Concealer. I have three shades. That's how you can tell I love this concealer. I have one that I use for brightening and under eyes. I have a skin tone one, and then I have one that I'll use for a little bit more depth or to mix into some of my lighter concealers. My Too Faced Born This Way concealer is fighting with this one, but as far as this year goes and this year's releases, this was the best, best, best that I've tried. I feel like it does not crease under my eyes. It gives me good coverage though. Like it's not natural at all. It gives me coverage, but it's not too much coverage and it still looks really nice and soft on the under eyes. And most importantly, like I said, it wears really well. It does not crease at all. And this has been my favorite concealer and it works really, really great for spot concealing as well. I have a big fat friend right here. This covered it. So favorite concealer of the year. And to go along with that, one of the two powders that I'm talking about today are is the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. I have this in two colors. This is the shade light and I also have the shade medium, which is a little bit more skin tone. So this is a extremely lightweight and blurring powder. I don't think I've ever had a powder that blurs quite like this does and sets the under eyes like this does. It's so light, it's amazing for the under eyes. I have this to set my under eyes right now and I feel like it does not disrupt concealer, it does not powder down the under eyes so that you can see texture. It's so lightweight and I love it so much and how much it blurs that I got the shade medium so I could set my whole face with it and it's the most perfecting powder 
I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I hate the packaging though. So cheap. <laughs> the next powder that I have to talk about, honestly, I talked about this last year, but I have a newfound love for it. Like my purposes for using it are different now. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish. So this was in my favorites last year, but I liked it last year as a touch-up powder. I would keep it in my purse and I felt like no matter how many times you powdered, it never looked cakey. Well, this year I bought the shade Fair Light and I I'm re-obsessed with how to use it. So I now like to use this to brighten up my under eyes, which before I got this color, I did not like the powder for my under eyes. I just didn't like the way that it looked. I felt like it sat weird on my under eyes, but turns out it was just the color. So as soon as I got the lightest color, I liked it for the under eyes. I like it for doing what I'm doing right now. And then I also like the shade number two for setting the outsides of my face, because again, you can't ever put too much of this on. It's the perfect touch-up powder. For that reason, I'm putting this in again because the new color completely changed my perspective on this powder. So let's move on to eyebrows because this is just in the order that I apply my makeup. I have three eyebrow products to talk about. So the first one is like two or three dollars. This is the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil, and I'm so thankful that I got to do a sponsorship with e.l.f. this year, and this is one of the products that I tried, and I fell in love. Now, it feels cheap, but I have the shade, I believe it is Neutral Brown, and it's just the perfect color. It's not too pigmented. I struggled this year with a lot of brow products. I felt like they were too pigmented. This did not have too much color come off, and it... It's not the thinnest tip like I prefer, but it's really great for quick everyday brows and you can't go too heavy handed. It's gonna look natural if you're not wearing a lot of makeup. So if I have a natural makeup day and I wanna make sure my brows stay on the lighter side, I love this. It's only a few bucks. I plan on repurchasing this forever. It's awesome. The other brow product this year that I really loved was the Marc Jacobs Brow Wow Duo. I feel like this did not get the attention that it deserved. Um, now, talking about how sometimes the pencils apply too much pigmentation, this is kind of one of those. It's not the worst, like the Rare Beauty one I felt, but I do have to use a lighter hand with it, but it works really well. And what I'm more obsessed with is the gel. I feel like it has just the tiniest little bit of tint, but also separates the brow hairs so that your brows look thicker and it holds the brows really well. So every time I use this product, I really love the finished look. And this is the brow product that I use today really loving how my brows look and even though the pencil maybe isn't my absolute favorite it still is really really good so just as a whole i've used this a ton this year and i've loved it finally i discovered a new brow product that i loved and this is nothing new but it's one that i just fell in love with this year and it is the benefit 24 hour brow setter and i think what i love about it is the brush so it's kind of like the Charlotte Tilbury push-up lashes brush, but I feel like these rubber bristles do such a good job of separating your brow hairs so that your brows almost look thicker and it holds the brows really well. So last year, this Sigma Clear Brow Gel was my brow gel of the year. This year, it's Benefit. It is bomb. I do have a product that was in last year's that I had to talk about this year because it's probably the only cream bronzer that I grad for regularly and that was the Huda Beauty Tantor in the shade Fair. I loved this last year and I think I have ended up really loving it towards the end of 2018 so that is why it ended up, am I saying the years right? 20, whatever. It was in last year's favorite, but I didn't end up really loving it until towards the end of the year. So this year, it really has gotten used and abused for me. And I wanted to add a cream bronzer into this video because cream bronzer is one of the only cream products I'll use. And this one's still just like used like crazy. Okay, let's get into powder bronzers. 2020 was the year of bronzers. They came out with some of the best. So it was really hard to narrow it down because at first I had an obnoxious number of bronzers that I wanted to talk about. I narrowed it down to three. So the first one is, 
the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. I have mine in the shade number two. This is the bronzer that I am currently wearing, and this is my warm bronzer that I love to wear. So if I wanna look like I went on vacation, this is it. It's a bit dark for my skin tone right now, but that is okay, I still used it anyways, and it's just a wonderful formula. I love the packaging, I love how big it is. Charlotte Tilbury, by the way, just was my brand of the year overall. I think she had the best releases, and she ended up becoming one of my favorite brands this year, probably my favorite brand. So her bronzer was really, really banging. Highly recommend it. Now another bronzer, this is fairly new for me. I ordered it really on a discount, so I think it they might be reformulating. I'm not sure, but this is the Tom Ford Terra bronzer, and this is a little bit cooler if you compare it to the Charlotte Tilbury, which you'll see in my swatches. So I really like this because I feel like the formula is so easy to apply. It just brushes on. You don't need to blend it, I feel like. It just looks incredible as well. It's a little bit more flattering for my current more fair skin tone when I don't have a tan. So I've just been loving the way that it applies. And I only got this like a month or two ago, but I've been using it like crazy. And then the last bronzer that I've been loving this month is the Scott Barnes Bondi Beach Bronzing Powder. And I did not want to like this, you guys, because the price on this is astronomical and you're getting literally packaging from Maybelline. But the product inside is incredible. The color is pretty similar to the Charlotte Tilbury, but I he has a great formula. I'm not going to deny that. At the end of the day, I did find myself reaching for this bronzer a lot. It was one of my favorites this year. It's, again, a very warm bronzer, and it has a little bit of a golden sheen to it, which I think makes it extra special. I don't want to recommend this to you guys because it's not worth the money, but it's also an amazing formula. So I don't know. <laughs> if it goes on sale, definitely look into it because it was one of my most used bronzers this year. It's a beautiful formula. He has a great formula. All right, let's make our way into blushes. So the first formula that I fell in love with this year was from Patrick Ta, and these are the Double Take Cream and Powder Blush. You can't go wrong with whatever color you get. I have two shades here. I would love to own the whole collection, but it's just not necessary. So I have a pinky one. This is called She's That Girl. And the way that these work is they have a cream formula and then a powder. Both formulas are equally as beautiful. Specifically, though, I do love the cream the most. I like to apply creams with a... Uh, what is this? with a sponge and then I'll pop just a touch of powder on top just for the longevity purpose and I know he said you can do powder first cream after I still prefer the cream first and this is gorgeous if you love pinky blushes and they blend out so easily the cream is incredible the one that I'm current wearing right now is she's so LA and this looks so intimidating I did not think that this was gonna work for me at first but this is the color that I'm wearing it's just so neutral it goes with every look that you come up with and it has a little bit more warmth than you would expect when you apply it. It looks just like a really great neutral blush. So this is the one that I went for today. Another formula that was incredible that I tried this year is from Chantecai. And ah, I wish the packaging was a little bit more luxe like we're paying for, but I can't deny the quality of these blushes. So I have Bliss, which is the butterfly, and then I have Emotion, which is the bee. And they look really, really soft, and you don't think they would show up on your skin tone, but it's very surprising if you have a skin tone like me, how much they show up. Like, it's not too pigmented, but they just apply so soft. You don't really have to blend them out because they apply the perfect amount, and the colors are gorgeous. It's a soft, stunning blush. Highly recommend looking into these. This blush I stopped using halfway through the year because I was using it too much but this is the Dior backstage blush in rosy glow now typically I prefer a pinky blush so this to me was my pink blush of the year it was my go-to pink blush and it looks a little bit intimidating in the pan but it applies really soft and it really does give such a gorgeous youthful glow to the skin and I love pink blushes they are underrated this was my favorite pink blush of the year it's amazing along with a pink highlighter to complement it. Gorgeous cheeks. The last single blush that I have to show you is from Almay. I've talked about this plenty of times, but this is my favorite drugstore blush. This is in the shade Nearly Nude, and you see it has quite a strong 
shift to it and you'll see in the swatches the shine it's just so beautiful if you love a glowy blush that's more neutral tone like this you will love this it applies like a dream with such ease i really do need to get other colors in this line because it is the bomb.com one of my absolute favorite blushes this year i mean clearly it's in this video but i really 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 love it glowy blush gals you need this now, the next product that I want to talk about is from Wayne Goss, and this is the Weightless Veil Blush Palette in the shade Coral Rose. And while I do love the blush, where my strong love comes from is with this highlighter, one of the best highlighters. The blush is really pretty, don't get me wrong, but the highlighter is just out of this world. It is so smoothing on the face. I feel like it doesn't emphasize texture. Every time I put it on, I'm just completely blown away. I just, I can't help it. I have to just apply a touch. Just so you can see the glaze that it gives you. I barely touch my brush into the pan. Solid. Like, I have another one of these in another color. And I feel like the formula is not as good as this one. Like, specifically, you need to try Coral Rose. And then we'll have my all-time favorite highlighter this year. I'm not going to talk about it too much because in the last three months that it's launched... It's all I talk about, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Superstar Glow Highlighter. Like I said, Charlotte Tilbury absolutely killed it this year for me. So this is the highlighter that I applied down first, so you will see the application of that on screen. Something about this highlighter, it's just so glowy, but so natural. I feel like it doesn't emphasize my texture. It gives you a true glow from within look and I wasn't into super blinding highlighters this year and I feel like this highlighter was perfect. It embodied exactly what I wanted. A more natural highlight, favorite highlighter of the year. If you're going to pick up one highlight, it needs to be this one. It's incredible and I know I put so many of you onto it. The next highlighters that we have are in quad forms. I couldn't not talk about these. I told you in my 2019 makeup favorites, where are they now, that these were going to be in here. Specifically, I do prefer the shade Rose Gold because I like a pinky highlight, but Pure Gold is also just as good. Now, if you don't like glitter in your highlights, there are a couple shades in here that do have these very tiny specks of glitter, which I don't think you will love. So I don't think these are for everybody, but if you're like me and you don't mind that, they are such a very fine glitter. I feel like I barely notice, and I just love the way that Dior does their highlighters, and these I've been loving all year. The last single highlighter that I have to talk about is also from Dior. Dior creates some of the best highlighters, in my opinion, and this is in the shade Rosy Vibes. I don't want to talk about this too much because I don't believe that you can get this anymore, but this came out in their spring collection. For a while, these two were my dynamic duo. They went incredible together, so this with any pinky blush is gorgeous. I never thought I would be really into pink highlighters, but 2020, like I said, I really got into pink highlighters. So this one was just phenomenal. Now we're going to move into blush face palettes. So let's start off with the first palette that I thought was incredible this year, and this is from Physicians Formula. This is the Butter Collection with Whaley. Um, she's another YouTuber, but I just love the colors that she chose. Not a big fan of these highlighters, and honestly, I feel like they've started to expire, maybe? I don't know. They feel a little bit more oily than normal, but I love the Butter Highlighter. It's just one of their OGs, but specifically these more neutral tone blushes that she chose I thought were incredible, and this deal was phenomenal. I just remember getting this on sale, and it was the best deal ever. Like, this bronzer alone is like $11, so I got this for around $11, and the colors are great. The formula is really smooth. I don't know if this is still available. I sure hope it is because it's awesome. Every year, I really do fall in love with the new Hourglass palette. Now, this one wasn't my favorite one that they've ever come out with, but it doesn't matter because it's still so, so, so good. And it's just one of those palettes where if I'm not sure or I don't want to think about it, this has everything that I need all in one palette. Like I said, it's not my favorite. It's not the best color story I think that they've come out with, but the formulation is just so nice and it's such a thoughtless palette that I did end up grabbing for it a lot this year. So I would be lying if I didn't put this in here because it really was one of my most used and I highly recommend it. It's very pricey, but every year it definitely gets its money's worth from me. This guy 
by I got really really late I remember having FOMO with this and eventually just purchasing it and boy am I glad I did so this is the NARS Overlust cheek palette as much as I love my pink blushes I really got into these more neutral tone blushes and I love these formulations here the highlighters are okay but that's not why this palette is in this video it's because I went for these blushes right here and they have such a natural sheen to them that I feel like make your skin look more alive they look youthful without emphasizing texture and the colors are just perfect everyday neutral tones so I, again I'm not sure if you can get this anymore but I'm really happy that I snagged this because it is perfection and even though NARS bores me the quality on their products always 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 amaze me and then another palette that I grabbed for a lot and this is one that I grabbed for without thinking about you guys I only decided to put it in my yearly favorites today when I was going through my drawers I had never thought about it previously but I realized that I did grab a lot for my Scott Barnes illuminator palette so this is incredible and I said I like natural highlights but man am I being a hypocrite and going against my own word because these are so 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 blinding but I feel like because this had so many highlighter options when I wasn't sure what highlighter I wanted to go for I would always go for this and it wouldn't let me down I'd, I've said this many times lately, but I do think his products are overpriced just because he sells them at a luxury price point, but we're, we don't get the luxury experience with it. I think his formulas are really nice, but it comes in cardboard and just as somebody who buys luxury makeup, this should not be at a luxury price point. If he put it in nicer packaging, you could totally argue for it. I could totally argue for it, but it's made in China and luxury makeup is never made in China. And the reason you typically go to China to make makeup is because it's just cheaper to make there. And there's no time put into the packaging. So it just doesn't make sense as to why his price point would be where it's at. His formula is great. Not saying the formula is not good. It's just everything else doesn't make up for what you pay for typically for a luxury product. So it is time to move on to eyes. So we'll start off with what is on my eyelids now. Eye palettes will not be in this video. So I do have one eye topper that I really love this year. And this is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Walk of No Shame gem or jewel pot is what it's called. So first of all, I love the little jewel design at the cap. And this is kind of an interesting lid topper product. It does not have a creamy texture to it. You can't squish it in or anything. You just kind of pick up the shine here. So I love this as a very soft, glittery lid topper. Normally I would have more eyeshadows as a base but I just wanted to throw it on to show you so I did have to go back quite a few times in the pot but this is amazing. She has other colors. I do want to pick up other colors but I love glitter eyeshadows and I feel like this gives such a refined glitter look without being too obnoxious and most importantly the wear time on this uh amazing this is not going anywhere y'all it doesn't crease it doesn't fade your eyes are gonna look like this for 12 hours i'm not kidding it's amazing and it's so 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 pretty a couple eyeliners so the first one is from wayne goss and this is the essential eye coal i think he really killed it with this formula very very basic packaging but i feel like it's just a reliable black eye coal it's so easy to manipulate on the eyes it's easy to apply it sets down it wears a really long time it's fabulous in the waterline it's extremely black just everything I would look for in a black pencil and eyeliners a black eyeliner specifically is nothing exciting so I'm gonna say is it works it's a really great one and when I needed a black pencil this is the one that I went for this year next we have the Charlotte Holbury magic liner duo so this came out earlier in the year and it came out with some corresponding quads and I did not expect to love these as much as I did. I feel like because of this product, it really introduced me to trying out different eyeliner colors because before these came out, I was all about the black always and now I'm even wearing the color Chopper, Chopper, 
copper charge right now. So I have the matte side on. So it's a little bit of a deep burgundy eyeliner and I'm so into colored eyeliner now. I'm not as big of a fan of the metallic side, though today I did actually use it almost as eyeshadow. So I applied it all over my waterline and then on my lower lash line down here as well. And it's stunning. This is a great way to use the metallic side because I feel like it doesn't really show up on the waterline, but if you just use them as shadow, they are perfection. So I've used these all year round, nonstop. They are amazing. They're not as creamy as I would like, especially the mattes. They do have a little bit of drag to them, but they don't go anywhere. And just the fact that she was the one that got me to try out different colors makes me love this product. And the colors that she chose are great because they're colorful, but they're still wearable. They still do their jobs as an eyeliner. Like even though this is a burgundy eyeliner that I'm wearing, you can hardly tell. It still does its job of defining the eye. The eyelash of the year has to go to the Ardell Naked Lashes, whatever style that may be. I'm currently wearing 421. These are the lashes that I'm working on. So this set was so kindly gifted to me from Ardell. It's their Naked Lashes set from the holidays. So if you see this, I highly recommend picking it up. It's gonna be $15. You get four styles of each of the Naked Lashes. These look like lash extension, you see, guys. They are my favorite everyday lash. They're what I'm wearing right now, and they look natural. They look like lash extensions. I don't know, these are just the ones that I go to, and I have really small eyes, and these fit my eyes so well. They're not too long. They have a curl so that you can see them because I have very straight, natural lashes. Zero complaints about these. They're fabulous. I've been wearing these all year. It's time to move on to lips. So lip liners, I stuck with the same lip liners that I had in last year's favorites. I still love my Charlotte Tilbury. I still love my Pat McGrath. I still love my ColourPop. But a new brand that really stepped up their game as far as lip liners and made their way into my everyday routine was the Wayne Goss lip liners. Now these are different than the Pat McGrath, the ColourPop. They aren't creamy like them. They're very similar to MAC in that they have more of a waxy consistency, but I do feel like that makes the lip liner actually last longer and really stop the lip color on top from bleeding. And he came out with some really great colors. So of course I couldn't find it, but Sapia has a little bit more of a cool brown undertone to it. So Sapia is probably my most used. Right now I'm wearing mauve and this is pretty close to my natural lip color as well. I just love the colors that he went with for his initial launch. I think they're very natural everyday wearable colors and highly recommend it. I do I like his lip liners were definitely my favorite part of what came out of his lip line. Couple lipsticks. So I'm still into Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. They are my favorite. Now my most used this year were In Love with Olivia. This is from her Hot Lips 2 collection. This is the color that I'm wearing right now. To me this is just the perfect everyday pink color. And then the other one that we have is Super Starlet. I've been rocking this one a lot this holiday season. It's a little bit of a deeper red. It is stunning. I did a my top five reds in the past month. If you want to see that video, this one was featured in it. Um, and this is a fairly new one. It does have like a really gorgeous diamond kind of top. I love it. It's my current favorite red. The next lipstick brand that I fell in love with this year was Artist Couture. He really killed it with his nudes. So he came out with a nude line for his Supreme Nudes collection. And I picked up two both during these Sephora sales and I dug for these nudes a lot. So the first one is Angel Baby. This one's going to be a little bit lighter and then Saucy Gal when I wanted something a little bit deeper. I'm really into more brownie type nudes so Saucy Gal is perfect for that. He has a great formula. They smell like pixie sticks or something. I don't know. They smell really really delightful. Great quality, great colors, just a formula that I found myself reaching a lot for this year. Seriously, if you're on the market for a nude lipstick, he has a fabulous formula. A formula that I did not think was going to make it into 2020, but due to mask wearing, it certainly did. These are the Maybelline Superstay Matte Inks. And normally this would not be a formula that I love, but they're so good for masks, you guys. These do not budge. They don't go anywhere. So if you want a lip color where you can take your mask on and off and it's 
remains undisrupted. Go for it. I have a lot from their coffee collection, so I've been wearing these two colors the most. So the first one is Chai Genius, which is going to be more of that cool tone brown, and then the next one is Caramel Collector, which I really loved during the fall season for a more bold fall lip. They're both really nice. Again, when we no longer wear masks, so hopefully sooner than later, I probably won't love these as much, but as far as masks goes, they were incredible. Lip glosses. This isn't anything new, you guys. Pat McGrath Labs was my go-to lip gloss along with Fenty. I didn't feature that, but Fenty was also my go-to's, but I really, really, really reached for my Pat McGrath a lot, so I did want to share with you my most used colors, and Dare to Bear was featured last year, but a new one that I fell in love with this year was Faux Real, which is just a tad deeper. It doesn't have the shimmery duochrome that the Pat McGrath had. So it's a little bit more of a flat color. Like I said, I do like more brownie nudes. That's kind of the nude I went for this year, and this was the perfect gloss to top that off with. And you guys, what I love about this formula is it's extra shiny. It's really the best gloss formula that I've ever tried. It stays on a relatively long time for a gloss. It's super shiny. It really plumps the lip. It's not sticky at all. I just feel like this is the happy medium of nothing too oily so that it fall goes all over your face, but it's not too sticky. It's just the perfect lip gloss, my absolute favorite formula. I didn't know if this was a gloss. It's, I mean, it's not, but this is the Dior Lip Glow Oil. I have mine in the shade number 12 Rosewood, and this I use more so for work just to kind of throw on. It adds a little bit of color, it moisturizes the lips, and it's super duper comfortable. I absolutely love this product. Now this shade doesn't have too much color to it, but I love this product. It's great just to throw on for every day, just to add a little bit of liveliness to your face. So if you're on the market for a lip oil, I definitely would point you into the direction of Dior. Alrighty, it is time for the last and final product, and that is a setting spray. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter 2020 version. It really does make your makeup last longer and I'm not really a believer of setting sprays improving longevity of makeup but this one really does it and it smells delightful. It has kind of a, a sweet floral scent to it but I love the scent. I don't care about fragrance. The best spray. I swear it also kind of blurs the skin just a little bit. It is just a spray but I swear it does something that makes my complexion look better and it does make the makeup last longer. I, if you saw Wayne Goss's demo, I believe he put like powder or an eyeshadow down or an eyeliner or something and he sprayed it with the spray and then he had another swatch without it and you would rub the swatch that had the spray and it didn't move. It was incredible. It really does work. I swear by it. All right, you guys. I'm really out of breath. Whew, Jose is going to have a fun time editing this one. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Those are all of the products in 2020 that really stood out to me. They were the best of the best. I've tried a lot of makeup. I put a lot of thought into this. I highly recommend and stand by all of the products that I featured in today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. Keep an eye out. I still have to do my palette video and then uh, the worst products of 2020. So make sure you're subscribed to see that. Okay. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.